My name is Jay Sugarman, and I want to welcome you to Museum Open House. This ongoing series features and highlights many of the outstanding museums and other cultural institutions. The main purpose of most programs is to inform viewers about current and upcoming exhibits, various programs, resources, and other opportunities that are available for the general public. Today via Zoom, we're fortunate to have as our guest, Erica Herschler. Erica is the Kroll Senior Curator of American Paintings at the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. Organized together with Tate Britain, Erica is also the curator of the blockbuster exhibition at the museum entitled Fashion by Sargent, a collection of more than 50 John Singer Sargent paintings, together with some of the clothing, hats, and other accessories seen in his portraits. During the program, we're finding out why and how the exhibition came about. We'll go on a behind the scenes tour and in the process come to better understand and appreciate the importance Sargent placed on the clothing and fashion choices he made for his patrons and how these decisions helped him depict his subjects and the manner he decided. Let's start by meeting Erica and then hearing all about Fashion by Sargent will be on display until January 15th. Welcome, Erica. So delighted you're able to be here. I'm delighted to be here, Jay. Thank you for inviting me. And first of all, just congratulations on curating one of the top, if not the top <laughs> exhibition in the Boston area this past year. I've had the good fortune to visit twice and look forward to attending another time soon. but. Before we jump right to the exhibition, I think it would be of interest if you'd please start by very briefly sharing just a little more about your background, professional interest, and your role at the museum. Sure. Well, I have been working at the MFA for a very long time, I will be the first to admit. And um, I am trained as an art historian. I have a doctorate in art history from Boston University. And I really started working here at the MFA when I was in graduate school and basically have worked my way up. I'm now the Kroll Senior Curator of American Paintings. And uh, it's a great joy to get to know such a beautiful collection so well and so deeply. Terrific, terrific. Well, let's move on to the exhibition. Would you please share why and how it came about, the inspiration, motivation you and others had in creating such a display? Sure. The, the show had sort of an interesting history in that it came out of a paper I was invited to present at a symposium in Paris. And I always say yes, if anybody invites me to speak in Paris. And I was invited to give a paper about Sargent's portraits of men. It was for a show that took place at the Petit Palais in connection with a uh, display of works by and about Oscar Wilde. And there was a symposium about images of the dandy in art history. So as I was putting the paper together, I realized how much it was the clothes that tell you who these people are. And when I put the paper together and presented it and came back to Boston and immediately had a lunch date with our then um, curator of fashion and textile arts, Pam Parmel, and we, um, uh, agreed to work together, a fashion historian and a paintings historian on this exhibition. So that was in 2017, hmm. quite a long time ago. We then pitched the exhibition to uh, Tate Britain, which has a wonderful um, collection of Sargent's work in their holdings. And so they came on board as our curatorial partners. The cast of the exhibition uh, curatorially has shifted over the years due to some retirements and et cetera, but um, we're thrilled to offer it here in Boston. And then the show will travel to London, opening there on February 22nd, 2024. Fantastic. You know, as we make our way through the exhibition, would you give us an overview please of 
a thinking between the organization, the different themes uh, that you and others had in mind to display these incredible works? Sure. Well, as you saw from the very first slide with that draped introduction, uh, it looks very theatrical. And that was on purpose because I, one of my points for the exhibition is to think about portraiture as a performance. It's costumed, it's dressed, it's posed. And so the show is arranged thematically rather than chronologically. We provided that timeline that you saw to uh, help our visitors situate themselves in Sargent's life. Sargent lived from 1856 to 1925. And in fashion terms, he lived from the time of the hoop skirt to the time of the flapper. Mm -hmm. So uh, we wanted to bring together ideas about how he used fashion and what fashion uh, reveals about the personalities in these portraits. Uh, rather than starting at the beginning of Sargent's career and going to the end, we put together um, themes throughout the course of the exhibition. I wanted to start the show, as you see it here, with a single pairing to get people to see an object and Sargent's image of it. So we're seeing Sargent's portrait of Lady Aline Sassoon wearing a black opera cloak. And in the case is the exact opera cloak that she was wearing. And there are differences between what Sargent saw and how he saw it. And that's what we wanted to bring to visitors' attention right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And as we continue, we enter another wonderful room with terrific backstory to it as well. Our designer, Louisa Responduk, is relatively new to the MFA, and she um, put together a, a narrative flow and thematic look of the exhibition that's quite different from the way we've used the spaces before. This room was intended to evoke an artist's studio. And you can see on the right-hand side, there's a large uh, window that replicates the window in Sargent's studio in London. So we wanted to talk about Sargent as a painter and what his artistic preferences were. And among them was a great preference for painting sitters in black or in white. Mm -hmm. He painted his sitters in black or in white more often than he painted them in any other color. So the first gallery is devoted to images of men and women in black and white like the beautiful portrait that you mm -hmm. see on the left here of Mrs. Edward Davis and her son Livingston, a real symphony of black and white. And from here, we get a peek into the next gallery area. Yes, you walk from an area that talks about Sargent's artistic preferences to one that also includes the role of fashion in the lives of women of this uh, period and in this, if I can put it this way, economic uh, category. In other words, wealthy enough to afford clothes uh, made, for example, by the House of Worth, one of the leading, not the only, but the leading fashion houses that were established in Paris in the late 19th century. As Edith Wharton describes in her novel, The Age of Innocence, clothes like this were a woman's social armor. Mm -hmm. In other words, if she knew the right kind of dress by the right designer to wear at the right time of day to the right occasion, she was given the confidence to be able to navigate an unfamiliar social situation. The dresses in this gallery all belong to Sarah Choate Sears, a Boston woman who was uh, both an artist and a collector herself. She was a friend of Sargent's and you can see her just to the right of the white dress. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Now they, they complement uh, the painting so well the way you've spaced things out. I mean, the grandeur, <laughs> it's just so captivating. Uh, you have to spend hours just looking <laughs> to appreciate. Um, 
Well, the amazing mm-hmm. thing, since many people haven't seen the actual garments, is how beautifully they're made, exquisitely crafted, cut, sewn, the pattern so beautifully integrated into the overall design. And then you notice, after you see that, how much Sargent actually abbreviates in his paintings of them like Mrs. Fisk Warren, who you see in the back and the left with her daughter, Rachel. Mm -hmm. You could never reconstruct the dress over what Sargent shows you. You can't tell where the seams are. You can't tell where the sleeves begin, but you get a fantastic sense of the um, sparkle of that satin fabric, the pattern, the way it moves in the light. So he's telling you about the garments without a meticulous description, but a real feeling for form and light and color. Oh, it's such a treat to be able to just be right in front of any and all of these paintings to begin to appreciate the incredible craftsmanship of Sargent. There's some wonderful paintings from our own collection here, like Mrs. Boyd with her uh, sort of periwinkle pink polka dot dress in the background, or um, Mrs. Fisk Warren and her daughter, Rachel. But we also have brought together paintings from 35 different lenders, both public and private. So this is a chance to see the uh, among the m- most beautiful of Sargent's portraits of both women and men. Indeed, indeed. And now we're going to transition from Art of Dress here. We're going to make our way to the next major area. Uh, The next major theme in the exhibition is sporting with gender. And in this, we sort of look at the way clothing was very gendered in the 19th century. Men wore either suits or trousers and jackets, and women wore gowns or skirts and blouses. But the people who wore them weren't as strictly bifurcated as the clothes were. And we see interesting things in the 19th century. For example, women take much more public roles than they ever had in the past. They're becoming educated, uh, allowed to attend uh, colleges and universities. They're active, um, becoming lawyers and doctors, active in politics, working for suffrage, becoming extremely influential in social reform. And aspects of menswear um, start to come into women's fashion. On the other side, Uh, men start to be more fluid in their own clothing, depending on their own lifestyle and individual preferences. And we see that reflected in the exhibition as well. A few words about one or two of these paintings. Well, these are among the most uh, dressed up, dress up paintings in the in the gender section. On the left, the spectacular portrait of Dr. Samuel Pozzi wearing a red dressing gown. And to his right, Ina Wertheimer, the daughter of a London art dealer, who was an exuberant friend of Sargent's. Dr. Pozzi is Sargent's most unusual portrait of a man. He is not shown in the way you would expect a very well-respected and talented surgeon might be shown. Pozzi was a member of the Faculty of Medicine at the University in Paris. By the way, their faculty academic color was red. But Sargent doesn't show him in his office with a wall full of books behind him or a microscope on his desk. Instead, he shows him at home. And the original title is called Dr. Pozzi at Home. So he's shown as an artistic personality in this brilliant red dressing gown and Turkish slippers with a red hanging behind him, almost as if he were stepping out on stage to acknowledge his audience. It's Sargent's most unconventional portrait of a man. Mm -hmm. Ina Wertheimer, on the other hand, looks like one of the three musketeers. (laughs) She came bursting into Sargent's studio and picked up things that were sitting around. And Sargent uh, made her look as if she were a 17th century swordsman. Mm -hmm. But what's really sticking out from underneath her cloak is a broomstick. 
Yes, yes. Thank you for pointing that out. You know, continuing our tour to area with, I think, some of the most glorious costumes I found is uh, portraiture and performance. A uh, couple words about what we're going to be seeing here. Sure. Well, we've seen these portraits of people sort of play acting in the last two that we looked at. Now we're coming into a section of the exhibition that shows actual stage performers. This is the Spanish dancer Carmen Cita, who was known for dancing the bolero. It's a sort of swirling dance that would make her skirts rise up and her ankles show. She was thought to be very sexy. You can judge for yourself as she was one of the first women to be filmed by Thomas Edison. And you can see her dance if you go to YouTube. Um, if you go back for a second, if you don't mind, we have her actual performance costume here. And you can look at the difference between the incredible beaded and sequin decoration on the garment itself and the way Sargent painted them in a very abbreviated, lively flickering of brush strokes that gives all the sense of Carmen Cita's action as a dancer. Most definitely. Uh, this is in a different section of the exhibition. This is a section called Fashioning Power, or in a 1980s terminology, we can just call it power dressing. Um, you see in the left background, the Lord, uh, Lord Londonderry, the Marquis of Londonderry, wearing every decoration that his position as a very high aristocrat allowed him to wear at the coronation of Edward VII. So we can tell his rank and his importance by what he's wearing. Uh, on the other hand, the portrait of Mrs. Inches on the right, along with her gown, uh, just at the center of the photograph, shows her channeling the power of art history. This is a three-quarter length portrait, very demure with a French style frame that evokes 18th century French portraiture. And so it gives us a very modern woman who also shows the great uh, respect that both Sargent and she had for art of the past. Mm -hmm. Next to her, wearing an equally décolleté dress, I might add, mm -hmm. is Sargent's most famous portrait, which is uh, now best known as Madame X. Um, Madame X is shown as the quintessential Parisian, stylish, wearing a very elegant gown that unfortunately does not survive. Um, she used fashion and cosmetics to position herself as the most delightfully beautiful woman in Parisian society. And Sargent was dreaming of painting her and finally got her to agree to pose. She loved the portrait. We have a letter in our collection that says, Sargent has made a masterpiece of my portrait. But she didn't feel that way when it was shown at the Salon in Paris. And as a friend of Sargent's put it, the painting is surrounded by shoals of jibing women. So what happened was Sargent's painting became an avatar for people to complain about this woman, this upstart American from New Orleans, and the American painter Sargent, who had the presumption to make themselves into the most stylish in Paris, mm -hmm. an honor that surely should be reserved for the French. Most definitely. And now we're gonna lead into the <laughs> final viewing area. Two more beautiful ladies on the right, Helen Vincent, uh, who Sargent had originally painted in a white dress. Uh, she's certainly a beauty, but why is she wearing black? Well, Sargent changed his mind towards the end of the sitting. He scraped out the white dress and he painted her in black. And in, I don't think she ever really changed her clothes. I think Sargent just changed them for her. <laughs> or as he said in a letter to a cousin, I am in the thick of dressmaking and painting. <laughs> Through the doorway, you. we get to the last gallery of the exhibition, which is called Outside Fashion. 
We start with Lady Agnew, the beautiful portrait at the center of the slide. Uh, she comes to us from the National Gallery in Scotland. She made a sergeant's British portrait reputation. He lightened his palette from the kind of painting he had been making in Paris to suit the British national taste. And he channels British portraiture from the time of Romney and Reynolds and Rayburn with their sensuous half-length portraits of women. At the same time, he makes an amazingly direct, modern, sensuous portrait of Lady Agnew that brought, in the words of one critic, all London to his feet. <laughs> He painted British portraits for quite some time, but by 1907, he began to give it up. He was sick of painting portraits and he um, really felt that he had said everything artistically that he wanted to say. And he began to um, decline portrait commissions and instead mm -hmm. devote himself to painting still people in their clothes, but now mostly family and friends, mostly outside and mostly painting less attention um, to the rules of fashion of the early 20th century, which after all called for narrower silhouettes and higher hemlines and lighter fabrics. And instead he still enjoyed painting um, wonderful folds of taffeta and heavy cloth that he painted almost as if they were landscapes. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And another wonderful feature uh, complementing the exhibition is a terrific book that you and others put together, sort of the catalog for the exhibition. Would you share a little bit about this wonderful volume? Absolutely. We had a, a, a long uh, list of authors, guest authors for this book from Richard Ormond, who is a scholar of Sargent and the artist's great nephew and a great expert on the artist's work, uh, to fashion historians, cultural historians. We have a combination of longer essays about uh, the role of fashion in the art world at this moment, two short essays on individual paintings, among them Madame X and Ellen Terry and some of the other spectacular loans that we have in the exhibition. The wonderful thing about a book is that it lasts longer than an exhibition. So as you can see from the next slide, our show closes here in Boston on January 15th. Uh, it will travel to London. It will be at Tate Britain from February 22nd until July 7th, 2024. But the book, we hope, will last forever. Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> you know, given the exhibition's time so far. What's been some of the reaction and feedback from visitors, from people in the museum field to the exhibition that you've either heard, overheard um, during these last uh, couple of months? Well, I have to admit, I've been enormously pleased by what visitors are saying. I've had so many people come up to me just to say thank you for providing them with the opportunity to see a selection of Sargent's Greatest Portraits, for one thing, but also to have the chance to see them compared with these amazing garments. You know, we know what Sargent painted, but you don't often get to see what he saw. And I think the combination has been very appealing to people. You might quibble about whether the themes are the themes we should have selected or whether you agree with them, but I feel that by and large, there's been such a positive reaction just to the sheer beauty of the objects and to the um, richness of the exhibition. You know, when you look back yourself from the beginning ideas uh, five or six years ago to now having the exhibition up on view, are there just a couple of things uh, that you either learned or maybe surprised you from curating the exhibition? 
Absolutely. And, you know, it, it always takes about three to four years to put an exhibition like this mm-hmm. together, to gather the loans, to decide what you're even going to ask for, to write the book. This show uh, was meant to take place in 2021. And it was delayed because of the pandemic. I was thrilled that the museum never gave up on it and simply pushed it forward to a moment when we thought people would be coming back to museums and international shipping would uh, resume. I have to say that I learned to think more deeply about self-presentation. And I think it was all those years on Zoom just as we're on Zoom now, if you think about what am I wearing today? How do I look? How do other people see me? I think those ideas came much more to the forefront for me uh, over the course of putting the show together than I would have expected. No, we all know in addition to Zoom, the number of social media outlets that pays a premium on photographs, images, presentation, Mm. dovetails so well with the intent of the exhibition, for sure. Well, I thought so much about that and also about whether images tell the truth, which is something that we absolutely have all been thinking about over the past few years. What's real? in an image? Is it real at all or is it manufactured? And who decides what you're actually looking at? No, all good questions to take to the exhibition and in our daily living beyond for sure. You know, in closing, we just have a minute or so, but if you would like to share some of your current or maybe upcoming projects that uh, you're planning or have in mind, Oh, absolutely. We always have something wonderful happening here at the MFA, and we try to have a very sort of varied exhibition calendar, so there's something for everyone. Um, I'm now working with my colleague Courtney Harris on um, the Boston venue of an exhibition that was developed by the San Diego Museum that will bring together the works of Georgia O'Keeffe and Henry Moore, Mm. two artists who look carefully at natural forms, who enlarged and abstracted them, and who create a sort of dynamic visual conversation. So very, very different from uh, Fashion by Sargent, I have to say. But I have a few other tricks up my sleeve for later. (laughs) Well, definitely look forward to all to come for sure. But in closing, just want to thank you again so much, Erica, for taking the time to be here and for giving us some wonderful insight into the truly outstanding exhibition you curated with others. Thank you very much. You're so welcome, Jay. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share it. Also want to thank those of you watching for joining and hope you'll be able to tune in next time.